Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Grub with D-Dub. Hope y'all are doing okay. It's late night as usual when I like to get messy and make myself a snack or two. And I thought tonight I would try maybe one of the most popular foods in the world. And I'm hoping you can guess what that is, because it's pizza. And I love me some pizza. Love it so much, I probably have it once a week. I mean, who would have thought that a little um, piece of dough on a hot rock in Naples, Italy, 1889, I think they first made it, would make it away one of the most popular foods in the world. And uh, yeah, pizza's an interesting monster. Uh, you can, you know, wait at the door for Domino's or Shakey's or Papa John's to deliver it. And that's all kind of fun and real easy and everything if you're in a hurry, but I thought tonight, let's try it old school way and make it everything from scratch. I'm talking bread dough, pizza dough, all the toppings, everything, pizza sauce, let's make it all from scratch. And of course with pizza there's always this like international question like between Canada and the US, does pineapple go on pizza or does it not? Well tonight uh, my way is going to have pineapple and it would be sacrilegious if you didn't have pineapple if you had ham on your pizza. So we're going to be having that on our pizza, so just so you know. But anyway, I will uh, get to that in a minute. So, um, yeah, what about um, the other stuff that's out there? I mean, you can get pizza delivered, you can get pizza out of boxes, you can get pizza out of deep freezes, you can get it out of anything. I mean, who doesn't remember this thing when you were a kid? I mean, it came, every mom had it in the cupboard, it was real easy. You got the mystery tin of, I don't know what was in there, or what kind of chemicals made it all up, but interesting we're gonna bypass that tonight there was the mystery bag no writing on any of this by by chance here you don't know what it is I think it's pizza dough I'm not gonna risk it and then this little mystery pack here I think it's seasoning and cornmeal and something else but oops I should have covered that it's made by a very crafty company out there so they've had the market uh, covered for a long time you didn't see that from me but anyway that's one way to do it easy but probably full of chemicals and all sorts of stuff. The other way is everybody's other favorite from college. You know, no money, a five buck bill will get you a lovely frozen pizza with possibly one of the most tasty cardboard crusts you can find in society today. So I thought, well, we show all the options and then put old Casa, Casa de Mama, we'll put her back in the deep freeze for now and then we'll uh, move on to the real stuff. So anyway, a few different options. Delivery, or delicio, frozen, pizza kit. Yeah, we're gonna do none of those. We're gonna try it old school. So anyway, this is going back in the freezer and who knows, maybe one night when I'm real lazy and got a little bit of a buzz going, I'll dig this out. <clears throat> anyway, due to the fact that time is limited on these things, I thought, okay, how can I do this? properly and show everybody kind of the real stuff from scratch. So um, let's go through some ingredients down here. Um, if you look down below here, you'll see I've got the fixins for a real easy, easy pizza dough. Basically, three cups of flour. And I got a pot here, I'll just sort of do the, do the process. Three cups of flour, easy. Throw that in there. This is the bomb. Quick rise, instant yeast, can't fail. Don't have to worry about having the water too hot, the water too cold, you can't kill the yeast. This is infallible, this stuff, real easy. I think it's about two teaspoons in here. Rip it open, throw it all in there, all the dry goods together, real easy. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? A little pinch of salt, just regular table salt. Don't have to be fancy. In you go. And just to keep everything real healthy and good, a little bit of slippage there, olive oil. I think about a tablespoon and a half. No, about half a tablespoon, sorry. That all goes right in here as well. Easy. And I'll just make this up later, but just wanted to show you all how it worked. That's that. And then basically, a uh, cup and a third of lukewarm water. So just get out of the tap. Got it all going here. There's the cup. And a third, easy. 
And then get a stand mixer if you can. The ultimate bread dough maker or pizza dough maker is a stand mixer. And if you're looking behind here, got a shot of it. It's made by KitchenAid. Basically, old school bakery style. Get yourself a dough hook. It does all the kneading for you. It takes all the pain and suffering away. Put this baby on for a couple minutes. Everything will start to gum up. Pull away from the sides. It'll turn into a ball. Leave it on medium for about eight minutes. Just beat the you-know-what out of it. It'll do its thing. Basically, easy, easy, easy. Now put that in there. Down you go, lock it out, start it going. And I'm not sure how loud that is. I'm not gonna have it going for the full eight or 10 minutes because it's gonna get really annoying. So that was just basically to show you what to do, how to make an easy pizza dough. So let me turn that off for now. What you do, let it do its eight minutes, bring it up, pound it down, roll it up, put it under a nice sort of moist, damp cloth, leave it for about an hour and a half, and then through the magic of time-lapse photography, ta-da! We have risen pizza dough. That would take about an hour to get to the stage. So swish. I've already punched it down once. It's ready to go now. And um, yeah, basically, this is super, super easy. There it is. I said super, super twice. It's not gonna happen again. So you can feel how light it is. Um, it doesn't need to be punched down another time. Uh, punch down once and then let to rise just a little bit so it turns into a nice little soft, soft dough. So I'll leave that sit for a second. And then if we look down here, I'll show you some of the ingredients that we're gonna use tonight and make a super healthy pizza and I gotta stop using that word but everything is super easy so it's kind of my go-to so what I did first off is got all the fixins prepped so tonight we're gonna have ham pineapple pepperoni mozzarella cheese some red onions some mushrooms and then my favorite are the sweet bell peppers, red, yellow, and orange. Now these look like jalapenos or spicy, spicy peppers, but they're not, they're just regular run-of-the-mill bell peppers, but they're sweet, so they're really good on pizza. Back over here. So those are gonna be the toppings for it, which will be easy. And also, I better just have a little sip of this because I usually like to start off with a sip because I got dry mouth, but. Mm. Oh. That takes the dry mouth away right away. And it feels kind of wintry. I think it's about seven or eight degrees outside now, so this is a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Ramble Island. That's awesome. <clears throat> the next thing, of course, you need is pizza sauce. So you can go and buy pizza sauce out of a tin or out of a jar or out of a squeeze bottle, but it's super easy to make. And I don't know why I keep using that word, but it is just that easy. I like to make my own, because that way you can spice it up exactly the way you want and you know get the consistency you want and it's all healthy everything is good natural and homemade and that's the that's the key to this thing it's homemade so I use stewed tomatoes and we'll take a shot down here so stewed tomatoes out of a tin oregano I'm using Epicure's roasted garlic salt aioli mix it is excellent it's got it's got a little different thing going on than just garlic salt, so it's got a lot of extra spices in there. It tops off anything really, really nicely. Then my pink Himalayan rock salt, always good. And then ground black pepper. You'll notice my really fancy, fancy spice containers. Anyway, that is what it is. Those all go in uh, Mixmaster or a you know, blender or one of those handheld um, thingies. I can't remember the name of them, but blend it up. And it comes out basically to this pizza sauce consistency. And it's actually perfect every time if you just use those ingredients. I like a bit more garlic, and that way I know exactly what's gone in there, and you can't go wrong. That's good, that's really good. All right, so those are gonna get put aside for now, because I want them out of the way. And when you're making pizza at home, there's nothing like having a pizza stone. So I got myself a pizza stone at some kitchen store. I guess it was a ceramic pizza stone. Um, just a round uh, 11, 12 inch round stone. The key to that is about an hour before you're ready to go, put the pizza stone in the oven and slowly 
let it warm itself up. Set it to 500, leave it for one hour. I know it sounds like a lot of time and super hot in there, but by the time it's ready, the pizza will just slide on, it'll bake on there. And I'll show you mine in a second here. And it looks like it's dirty, but it's actually seasoned. I've used it so many times now, it's actually seasoned. So when you're done, when we're done with the pizza dough, flatten it out, top it, put everything on there, slide it onto the pizza stone and into the oven, maybe 15, 16 minutes, and we're good to go. And it's got the best, most amazing crunchy crust on it. I'm just gonna grab that actually. Hold on. So if you look down here, you'll see it's a very, very dirty looking, but it's not dirty at all. This is about a thousand degrees in my hands right now. I can feel it has been cooking for a while. So it is ready for the pizza crust when we're ready. So I'm gonna put it back in there and make sure the oven's back at 500. And that way you're doing like a quick, quick cook, 15, 16 minutes and it'll be done. Have the most amazing crispy crust and all is good. So I'll be back in one sec. All right, that is on. I'm going to turn this little thing sideways here and I'll play with that for in a second. And I'm going to get a bit of flour in. So the magically done pizza dough here, I'm going to roll out, or flatten out anyway. Take a bit of flour, throw it on a nice clean counter so it doesn't stick. All right. And... So if you're watching down here, spread the flour out so it's not going to stick or anything. And then just start rolling it up with your fingers. You can start squeezing the edges. And I'm not about to throw it over my head. I'm not any Italian by any means and I don't want to have this thing flying around because Lord knows it'll stick to the ceiling above me. So what I'm going to do is just push it out with my hands. If it does feel a little dry on the edges, you can use a bit of olive oil. And you can just put a little bit in your fingers. Or actually you can just rub it right on top there. Not going to hurt anything. And you can rub it around there, gives it a bit of pliability. And you can use a rolling pin if you want, but it's much easier just to push it out like that with your and I'm not sure if this is showing here, I guess it is. Yeah, you go around there. It's pretty springy, so it's been like it's done its thing with the gluten, so it's uh, it's definitely got some life to it. And I don't know, I'm sure there is a gluten-free version of this. I'm not interested, because to me that's like eating old Becky in the freezer there with the cardboard crust. So I'd rather have all the gluten, all the flavor, all the badness, you know, and because uh, what's life if it's not a little bit bad, right? So cheers to that. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Not that I have to have a drink with every meal I make, but come on, who doesn't? Especially pizza. All right, so. You can make it maybe, I don't know. Well, as big as you want, I guess. Depends on your pizza, pizza stone. Oops, rip there. All right. So this is because it's a personal, I guess, personal fan pizza. Although I probably can't use that because it's a patented name from one of those companies out there. But who's gonna see this, really? I don't know. I didn't say any of the names that that maybe we use that term, but whatever. So, anyway, because this is just gonna be me eating this for tonight and tomorrow, for lunch, I'm just gonna make it pretty much, I don't know, I would say that's maybe, I was gonna say that's maybe seven, eight or nine inches, but I don't know how hot it is in here, so you be the judge. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay, so, basically what you want to do, and I like a nice thick crust too, because you can get those little, um, a different flour and get a really crispy, sort of flat crust, and I tend to like a real, sort of a thick Chicago style crust. You can make the edges, you know, up on the side if you want. I just tend to have it, it's pretty flat, so. All right, so, come on there, okay. So, personal, pizza size and now they have this thing called a peel I didn't get one it's kind of the thing that slides out it's got the long wooden handle on it you put your pizza on it and that's what you slide into the oven so it rests on the on the stone I didn't have time to get one of those or just couldn't be bothered so I created my own with the uh, upside down 
upside down pie, pie plate type thing, so it'll slide off pretty easy. Lots of flour on it. And you can stretch this out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular, but you can kind of make it whatever size you want. So just make sure it slides around on there. So. All right. Okay, let's get going here. Soon, because we got another, we got a dessert to make too for this whole thing. So once this is in the oven, I'm gonna shut her down for a minute, get things ready, and we'll go back. So if you're looking down here, let's get the pizza sauce on. Homemade, lovely, lovely pizza sauce. And just spread it around. Yum, 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 yum. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of that. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with delivery and takeaway and all that kind of stuff. And this is a little bit more time consuming than picking up the phone and going, hey, Bob, bring me a pizza. But it's more fun. You get, uh, you know, you get to eat your own creation. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So lots of pizza sauce. I love pizza sauce. And right out to the edges. Right out to the edges. There we go. And, okay. Okay. That looks like enough sauce in there for now. Okay. All right. That out of the way. Okay, and if you're still looking down here, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, got the pepperoni, so I'm going to lay the pepperoni. Actually, hang on a sec. I'll put this up here. Put this back here. See what's going on. There we go. Hopefully that's better. All right. So, you can do these however you want. But, of course, if you're a bit neurotic, you have to make sure everything is laid out properly and equal. That's just me. All right. That and that. And, okay. A couple little guys in there. I know this may be like watching paint dry. I'm sorry, but, you know, it's kind of the process, so. It is what it is. Enjoy, talk amongst yourselves, have a drink, you know. I can't or I would. And so yeah, that's a lot of pepperoni, but I guess we can call it uh, D-Dub Special, you know, all sorts of pepperoni in there. So well, that's good. Definitely pepperoni action going on. Okay, then I have some red onions. Did I talk about the red onions? I don't know if I did or not, but a little bit of red onion. And I just cut them in little slices so they can kind of do their thing. And just place them however you want. They don't have to be perfect. And they'll be kind of buried underneath stuff. And the magic peppers. You can line those out however you want to. You can be color coordinated and alternate if you want. Or you can just put them on however. Whatever floats your boat. Or whatever. Hey, these are super, super tasty. There we go. That's the last time I'm using that word. Anyway, it's quite exciting actually to see your creation come to life, you know, even though it is just a lowly pizza. And I think it probably cost, all the ingredients cost like $6. So it's, it's definitely cheap and it's more fun. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of food that's fun because you made it yourself. And now on top of this, uh, I think I need to add a few more toppings. So back we go. I'm going to put some ham on top of this as well. Like I need more protein on here, but whatever. It's going to be a feast, as always. Little triangles. And this is smoked honey glazed ham from the butcher, the local guy down the road. Well, not down the road. He's way far away, but local anyway. I'll put that there. Then I've got, and there's that thing, you gotta have pineapple if you got ham, so let the uh, debating begin. I know a lot of people are like, ooh, pineapple, it's too sweet for a pizza, it's weird texture, it's, no, you gotta have the pineapple, trust me. So that goes on wherever and however you want. And it definitely, it makes the pizza for me. And... Nothing. I don't know why they called it Hawaiian, because I think the guy that invented it came from Greece and moved to Toronto, and Canadians were the first one to put pineapple on pizza. So it's kind of interesting. There's an interesting little trivia fact for y'all. And, alright, so just make sure you don't put all the juice in here, because it gets kind of juicy. And, there, and the last one, we got to eaten by me. 
All right. And last but not least, as far as the veggies go, some pineapple. This is looking mighty fine. And there's another debate too about the fungus thing. Fungus meaning mushrooms. Some are for, some are against. I'm definitely for these babies. So let's see what we can do here. That all goes on there. And oh, oven is ready. Okay, so I'm gonna have to stop this in a second here. As we're going long, we're going long. This is a this is a long episode. And then finally, the PS de la Resistance is the mozzarella cheese. Not the finish of the pizza off like beautiful mozzarella. So let's put that all over everywhere. This is kind of cool actually, yeah, here we go. And lots of cheese, more cheese the better. All right, so this is gonna go in the oven, coated in cheese, coated in everything. And if you're back down here, that's how easy it was to make a pizza. It starts to shrink in a little bit mm. um, as it sits and it's now loaded <laughs> like you would not believe with all this goodness here. All right, well, I am back. And through the magic of the pause button, the stop button, I'm able to fast forward through time and have everything kind of done and blend it together. So that was fun. It took a little bit longer than I thought tonight, but um, I'm excited about the results. I think you'll see why. So a little bit of a rehash. Pizza in a box may contain real pizza ingredients, may contain chemicals in the silver tin with no label. Just saying. Or Casa Mamacita, frozen solid with that lovely cardboard crust. Mmm, baby, bring it home. Or you can do what we did. Make the crust, make everything from scratch. Use a pizza stone, fresh ingredients, homemade pizza sauce with all the goodness from around town. And you come up with this. So I'm just gonna slide over here and grab it, cause it's ready. And then we'll take a little down shot and look at it. The finished product, I'm happy. And it smells really tasty. I think you'll be excited to see the results. Super hot, out of the oven, pizza stone. And Let's take a look down here. There we go. That is one killer looking pizza. I'm gonna try and zoom in if I can. Oh, there we go. Crispy around the edges. Bubble and cheese. Oh, the ham, the pineapple, the veggies, the mushrooms. I could not have asked for a better pizza. Crazy hot, this thing, so make sure if you're grabbing the stone, you use one or two or double pairs of uh, pot holders because it's super hot. But anyway, I'm glad with the results. I think uh, much better than the old box kit or frozen pizza. So I can't wait to tuck into this. This will be really tasty. So in the meantime, while that was cooking, I managed to slide on over into Dessertville. And one sec here, I'm just gonna put this back over here and of course I had to get a shot of Epicure something in here and basically I thought why not do dessert and who doesn't like a nice little chocolate pie for dessert so chocolate mud chocolate pie I think they call it so through the wonder of Epicure and their magic little pouch of goodness I was able to create a great little dessert it's still thickening a little bit, so I probably won't cut into it right now, but I'll show you anyway. So chocolate mud pie from Epicure, tasty vittles. Anyway, zoom on down here. It's super easy. Uh, honey graham baking crumbs for the crust with a stick of butter, melt it in the microwave, blend it all together into a nine inch pie plate. Just form it in with your hands. Didn't have time to show it on here, but it's all pre-done now. Just push it around the bottom of the pan and basically it fills it up, causes a crust to happen. And then get a boiler, use the chocolate mud pie mix, a 14 ounce can of coconut milk, and you can do light or you can do full fat. I like to do full fat because, ooh, it's tasty. And then you bring those two to a boil, 
take it off the heat immediately and then throw in a cup of plain yogurt. And you can use any brand, it doesn't matter. Blend that in, let it sit for a couple seconds. Bring the pie shell back out and set it down. It's been in the fridge for maybe 15, 20 minutes so it's kind of solidified a bit. Get the mixture that you've just made up, pour it all in, let it sit in the fridge for probably about an hour. I've only had it in there for about 40 minutes, but let me just grab that, you'll see. And down we go. There we go, that is a Epicure chocolate mud pie. Mm -hmm. Looks almost like the picture. With a honey graham cracker crust. And basically you can put on blueberries like the picture, you can put on any whipped cream, you can really do whatever you want. I'm not gonna put this on here right now, cause I'm gonna take this to work tomorrow and feed my starving co-workers, cause the poor things never get a chance to eat. But yeah, if you're looking at it here, you can touch it, you know it's done. It kinda has a gelatin in it, so it just bounces back. And when this sits in the fridge overnight, you'll be good to cut it and plate it out, put on some fruit or whipped topping or anything you want, and you're good to go. So it's basically covering all the food groups tonight. So we got the pizza, we got the dessert, we got the Granville Island Lion's Winter Ale, which has got a chocolatey caramel taste, really nice. Can't wait to have that with the pizza. And that's it. So there we go, another episode of healthy eating on Grub with D-Dub. It's really not that hard to do. Pizza, the world's number one favorite food. I mean, order it away when you're lazy, but when you're kind of having a fun night, just make it up. Get the family together, and or the kids, if you have those things, and um, make it yourself. It's so much tastier, and uh, it's kind of cool to watch the creation from start to finish. So that's it for now. Coming up to the end of October, I may have another one happening on Halloween night. I'll see what I can get my head wrapped around. And then next month I'll start all over again. I may have a little fundraiser attached to something next month, which is kind of cool. I won't let the cat out of the bag right now, but you'll see. I just wanted to thank you all for watching, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, to hit the like button and the little bell, I guess it is. It seems to be working. A lot of people are uh, giving me some good feedback. I'm having fun. And uh, yeah, check out the link for my Epicure uh, catalog store. And if you need to buy anything from there, please feel free to and uh, message me or say hello in the comments. And I'll be doing another draw this week. Um, forgot to announce who was last week's winner. I'll announce it on here. It's Susan Marcotte. And I'll be phoning you and let you know what you won. So thanks for commenting last week. Really appreciate it. Anyway, have a good night, guys, and uh, yeah, happy Halloween coming up. Cheers.